here we are sitting at the feet of Jesus here. And as you know, uh, this series of uh, devotionals are titled as Jesus' Feet because we sit at the feet of Jesus and meditate His Word and of course we surrender our lives and finally we pray and uh, this is mostly used for personal prayer, meditation and family prayer. So uh, when we sit at the feet of Jesus suddenly we need to see the face of Jesus that already we have discussed these matters in the previous uh, episodes. So uh, this day we are going through a passage from the book of Colossians. As you know the book of Colossians is written by Paul to the church in Colossia. And uh, certainly uh, Paul wants to encourage them and warn them in every episode, Paul is encouraging people and also warns people. So when we read the Bible, certainly we need to understand that the writer of the book or when God was asking people to write uh, these verses, he wants to encourage, of course, God wants, us, wants to encourage us and at the same time, God wants to uh, warn us so that we may not be deceived by the world. So, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 onwards, when we read uh, Colossians chapter 3, um, verse 1 onwards, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry, on account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and uh, obscene stuck from your mouth. Uh, do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of the Creator. See, um, I'm not reading all the passage. In fact, you know, our reading passage is Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 17. I will go through the passage later. So, the first thing that we see here is um, Paul is asking the people to set your minds on things that are above not on things that are on earth. So set your minds. What does it mean, setting our minds? Um, there are many different meanings for that, but uh, when we say, I want to set my watch, something like that, you know, we are setting the watch according to another uh, standard, you know, like that. Earlier there were, you know, in these days we can just look to the mobile phone and we can we know what is exactly the Indian standard time now or the world clock is there you can know uh, where of the world uh, what is the time and these things it is easy for us in these days but in earlier times if suppose you know most many people didn't have watches uh, wrist watches and uh, suppose I have a watch then uh, if it fails then what I do I do I, I want to I want to set the watch but to set the watch I need a standard time so what is the standard time so normally um, we give it to a watch repairer or something like that there was a man who was standing in front of uh, the shop of a watch repairer and of course in those days the watch repairer certainly will have a master clock so that uh, whenever he repairs a watch 
he can fix the time or set the time so a man normally every day he used to come to the uh, in front of the shop and uh, uh, he set his watch according to the master clock so when every day he was doing it one day the watch repairer was asking what are you doing every day and he said uh, i'm the man who is putting siren here i'm appointed by the government to put siren so the people in those days you know because many people didn't have watches and all they were depending upon siren to go to work and things like that so uh, he said it is i who gave uh, or you know put siren uh, blow siren uh, and uh, i want to see that i'm giving siren at the right time so what i'm doing is coming here and i set my watch every day with your master clock so that i will not fail uh, the right time and this watch repairer was just laughing and said man you know i'm setting my clock according to your siren so <laughs> this is a problem in these days setting a standard according to you know suppose you are setting your watches watch according to all the clocks you see everywhere then you know what is going to happen after some time maybe uh six o'clock normally six o'clock in the morning the sun rises and uh, if you are setting your watch according to many clocks then certainly maybe at 12 o'clock the sun will rise right or in the midnight you will see that the sun is risen so we cannot set our watch according to all the clocks likewise we cannot set a standard according to all the things that we see around so paul says that you shall not set your minds according to the things of this world rather you need to set your minds on things that are above that's what we see there if then you have been raised with christ seek the things that are above where christ is seated at the right hand of god set your minds on things that are above not on things that are on earth so this is a commandment to the the christians that is quite possible that because we live in this world even though you are a christian maybe you're born again but you may fail to set the standard according to the standard of heaven above means you know setting your minds on things that are above that means ours should be a heavenly standard but it is quite possible that many times we christians are setting our standards according to the world and we hear what the other people are um, saying and other people are doing we watch it and say yeah everybody is doing it then what is wrong in that so we do everything that is done by others and that's not what god expects from a christian a christian shall not do the things that uh others do just because that is common we need to set our minds or you know values not on things that are on earth but we need to set our minds on things that are above many people say that is quite normal because you know in earlier it was like that but now it is quite normal maybe it is normal for the worldly people but you are not a worldly man so you need to set your mind not because you know or you you need you need to do the things uh, not because everybody else is doing that because we are different <clears throat> maybe it is normal for other people but it is not not normal for us because we are people different what is the difference why is we say that we are different because we are dead to the world in colossians chapter 2 verse 20 we see if with christ you died to the elementary spirits of the universe you have died that we need to understand we are not living to this world we are living in this world but we are not living to this world we are dead to the world we are dead to sin that is the first thing that we need to understand so we cannot follow the things of this world because we are dead to the world and uh, 
chapter 3 verse 1 we see then if then you have been raised with Christ so you are dead to the world and now you are raised with Christ so we are with Jesus that's the difference the other people they are alive to the world and they are, they are dead to Jesus that's the difference all the people of this world either they are dead to the world and alive to God or they are alive to the world and dead to God so that is the basic difference between a Christian and a non-Christian a true Christian is dead to the world and he is alive to God he is living with Christ so that's what we see here if then uh, you have been raised with Christ seek the things that are above we are raised with Christ and you need to seek the things that are about why because Christ is seated at the right hand of God so why we need to think about the things that are above or why we should follow things that are above because we are dead to the world we are risen with Christ and where is Christ now he is in heaven he is above so our standard should be the standard of Jesus Christ. That's what we need to know. Our value system is just the value system Jesus was following. And our value system is not worldly value system, but it is a heavenly value system. A heavenly standard. That's what we need to understand. Because our Lord, He has risen and we also have been risen that's the spiritual reality Jesus was risen physically and he was raised from the dead and Paul says spiritually that happened to us also we also have died to the world and we are alive with Jesus and now we are living with Jesus and now our standard is the standard of Jesus so we are supposed to do only the things that Jesus would do. The famous uh, phrase uh, we used to learn. What would Jesus do? WWJD. What would Jesus do? That's the thing what we need to ask every time. What would Jesus do? If Jesus was in my place, what he would do? That's the only thing I am supposed to do in this world. My deeds should be the deeds of Jesus. But it is not just deeds. Paul says, of course, it is not just deeds that matters, even the thoughts or the mind. We are always talking about the deeds, but if our deeds should be the deeds of Jesus, our thoughts should be like the thoughts of Jesus. And our mind should be the mind of Jesus. Only then, our deeds will be the deeds of Jesus. So we need to understand that we are dead to the world and alive to Christ and uh, we need to set our minds on things that are about set. And there is another meaning for setting, you know, like uh, suppose in earlier time, internet was not common in those days. If we want to watch something like a movie or something like that, we used to have a DVD player and a television. So there are two remote controls there. One is for the television and one is for the DVD player. Suppose I am coming. I want to make the TV alive. But I am taking the wrong uh, remote control. The remote control of the DVD. And I am just trying, pressing it and uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I cannot make the TV on using the remote control of the DVD player. So maybe I can beat it on the table and try it, but it doesn't, it doesn't work. You know why? Because that remote control is not set to the television. So it will not respond. It will not respond. But suppose you are taking the TV control, uh, remote control of the television, then certainly when you are pulling it on, the screen is alive. 
in no time it's the same thing that setting our minds if you set your minds on things that are on earth when you are seeing the earthly things you are alive you are excited that's what is happening in these days people get excited when they are seeing the uh, worldly things and the heavenly things people just sleep they are not responding because they are they are alive to the world and dead to god but if you are really alive to god then none of these worldly affections worldly things will make you excited you know why in these days people are more into the worldly things because they have set their minds on things that are on earth earthly things makes us alive but if you are mind is set on things that are above let all the temptations come to you let money come and stand before you you will not respond all the pressures of this world you will not respond because your mind is not set on things of this world your mind is not set on money now many times you know the people when they see money you know they are alive i heard a man about to die and he called his son and he asked son give me a 2000 rupee note and the son thought that you know he want to give it to somebody or something like that he gave a note he just looked at the 2000 rupee note and just rubbed it and died because you know his mind was set on money i have heard that people are saying if you want to live you need money when i heard this story i understood that even to die people need money <laughs> why their mind is set on money to some people their mind is set on positions that's the reason why they will do anything to gain a chair a position and to some people they want to grab money and some people it is food some people it is worldly pleasures and pleasures of this body and they are after all kind of bodily pleasures you know why because their mind is set on that but if your mind is set on things that are above when all these temptations come to you you are dead to it you will not respond and uh, uh we have seen that we have put our uh, uh uh verse 3 it says um for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ Jesus Christ now i am now i am hidden with Christ in god put to death so in verse 5 paul is asking put to death therefore what is earthly in you so this is a commandment is a commandment put to death and a dead person never respond if you see a dead body even if you beat him he will not respond even if you make him stand he cannot stand because he is dead you cannot attract a dead person with anything because he is dead likewise we are dead to the world and paul says and it is a commandment put to death therefore what is earthly in you my friends sometimes we think and there is many people who are saying okay if you have accepted jesus everything is okay so you need not do anything hmm? and the hyper grace people they say in old testament it was do 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 in new testament it is done 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 so everything is done by jesus so you don't worry no that is not the truth that's not the truth they say that there is no commandment in new testament what is here this is a commandment what is it put to death see that's what we see put to death therefore what is earthly in you we are living in this flesh and it is quite natural 
that the flesh is trying to attract us all in our temptations. We have temptations. And uh, if everything has happened when Jesus died on the cross and you have become a saint and there is nothing else to do, then certainly we would never be tempted, right? Why temptations are coming? Because the flesh is a reality. The flesh is a reality. So we need intentionally, we need to put our desires. That's what we see. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires and covetousness, which is idolatry. See, this is temptations. These are all temptations. I'm not saying that we are slaves to these things. We are not slaves because Jesus redeemed us from the power of sin. But still there is temptation. And when temptation comes, <clears throat> we want to see that we are putting it to death. That is a commandment. No one is understanding this. This is an intentional act that we see. We need to put them all away. Verse 8, when we read it, but now you must put them all away. Once we were living in it, put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander and obscene talk from your mouth. Very clearly the Bibles ask us to keep all these things away. Put a wall between all these things. The desires of the flesh. It should not enter into you. It should not enter into you. And then we need to understand that we are not robots. We are not robots. We need to take decisions. Every time we need to take decisions. And of course, because we have the Holy Spirit, when you take a decision, then certainly God will help you to come out of it. So, we should, we should not go either to the extreme left or right, right? You know, we need a balanced understanding. Some people think that, oh, I cannot come out of these sins. I'm a, I'm, I'm a slave. And some people even say, even Paul said that he is a slave. No, Paul speaks about his old nature and his old times. Paul was not a slave to sin. Once he was. But when he was writing the book of Romans, he was not a slave to sin. And he says, you can win over everything because of Jesus Christ. I praise God because of Jesus Christ who gives me victory over all my passions. But passions are there. Passions are there. Temptations are there. That's the reason why Paul says you need to see that you are putting all these things to death. To death. See, we need to see that we are not receiving it. Maybe sometimes. It's not only, you know, the desires of the flesh. You know, many of the things. Many of the things. The lust of the eyes. When many, many things are, when you are offered deceptive gain. When you are tempted with an unshared comfort or undue respect. When you get an undue respect. What shall you do? You should say no to it. When you are always offered unshared comfort, you sh should say no to it. Because, you know, my mind is not set on things of this earth. My mind is set on things that are above. So the pressures of this world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and pride of life, it doesn't affect me. I put them to death. That's what we need to do in these days. So, uh, my mind is set to the heavenly things. So what happens? When you see the heavenly things, you rejoice. We need to rejoice in the things that are above. So when I have a chance to love somebody or, you know, uh, 
give, give something to somebody or share something. That makes me joyful because that is heavenly. That is heavenly. When I am um, seeing my brethren and you know when they are in trouble, so if I could help them, my heart rejoices. Because my standard is not the worldly standard. What the world says, yes, I say no, because I always say yes, yes, I say yes to the things that heaven rejoices. That's what I think. That's, that's my mind. I just want to see that I'm rejoicing in the things that heaven rejoices. So let us set our minds on things that are above. So let's close our eyes. And let's have a small prayer. Surrendering ourselves. And saying it to God from your heart. Let's pray. Lord. I'm not looking for the gains of this material world. Maybe many of the material things are coming before me. The positions and possessions of this world. And also the passions of my flesh. And also the pride of life. Lord, that will not make me excited. Because I am dead to these things. Lord, help me to put to death everything that is earthly in me. Lord, I know that I am called to live with a heavenly standard in this world. Lord, help me to rejoice in the things that heaven rejoices. Lord, help me to set my mind on things that are above. Help me to live like you lived in this world. I know it is difficult with me, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, I will do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So for further readings, maybe you can go through Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1 and uh, also chapter 11 verse 13 to 16 and 12 verse 1 to 3. All these passages are from Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1, chapter 11 verse 13 to 16, and chapter 12 verse 1 to 3. This will help you to meditate this subject more from the word of God. May God bless you.